Welcome to another episode of Treasure Corals and in today's video we're going to talk coral par. What par levels do different coral types prefer? And for this we are going to visit a local reef store uh, called Reef Paradise and going to talk to uh, its owner Dimo and going to walk through multiple aquariums and ask somebody who's got many many years of experience what type of par different coral prefer and also how does he keep them in his aquarium long term. So let's dive right in. Dimo, how are you doing? Good Hello, to see you. How are you? Good so, to see you as well. Uh, finally, we are back and I think today is going to be a pretty good uh, video. We're going to talk about the PAR. So you yes. clearly have many different aquariums, uh, SPS, LPS, uh, torches. Yeah, quite a big variety. We try to hit every, every spot. And I brought uh, a PAR meter and what I'm always curious about, what somebody with lots of experience keeping different corals and the corals all look amazing. What are the actual uh, PAR that you keep? Uh, but before we go into it, can you talk a little bit about the lighting on those three uh, tanks? So the whole store is on Radeon G5s. Um, the first table we have just the pros. We want to go for a little bit uh, less white looking, like the typical light everyone generally has. Mm -hmm. This is where we keep most of our mixed LPS. Um, so it gives people like a good idea. We also just wanted to have the pros on display so people could see the differences. Yep. On the second table we have the blues. Uh, this table is a big mix of all of our frags, some SPS, a lot of LPS, uh, a little bit of softies that we have. And then the last table, which is usually all of our acros, um, it has five radions, four of them are blues, mm -hmm. and one of them is a pro that's in the middle. Uh, we're using most of it for our torches right now because we had a really large order come in. But they're all running a fairly similar um, spectrum. The schedule yes. is identical as far as the timing because we're a store. Um, where we get into a little bit more of changing the light throughout the day is for the display because it doesn't really matter as much. People right. are here to look at you know the corals and the, and the so tables. So we'll save the display for the end of the video. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if we can maybe share your schedule uh, of the light um, that could go online. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. So I'll try to add it to the video. So mm -hmm. then maybe with a reference Absolutely. to your store, mm -hmm. so people can actually, when they buy coral from you, they'll be able to run on their radians, yeah, whatever schedule. schedule. Yeah. So perfect. All right, let's dive right in. And we're starting with the first tank, which is led by two Radeon Pros. Yes, so we have on this tank, uh, all the blues, violet UV, they're all at 100. Red and green are at 25%, and I don't run any white. There's quite a bit of indirect sunlight that ends up coming through. Yeah. Uh, so when I used to run a little bit of white, even at like five or ten percent, things started to look a bit washed out. Mm -hmm. um, so generally, I try to aim for around 100 to 150 par in this tank. Yep. Most of our stuff, like the f more fresh Ghanis, are under right now 150. Um, Australia Musas a little bit closer to the edge, around 110. So. Sorry, just to confirm, we are running the PAR right now. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the PAR meter right here. And we've got uh, Demo basically holding the PAR meter. And we're just going to uh, talk about the different uh, coral types. Uh, so right now, for example, we have it over the Gonis. Um, mm -hmm. And what are we reading right now, uh, Demo? Uh, we're just around 150. 150 PAR from here. Closer and to the edge. Gonis. It's actually higher. It's 200 towards the edge because it's bouncing off the glass. Which is something you n would never think for a setup like this. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we can actually see that. Uh, the light is right in the middle of the tank, so you would think that the spotlight or whatever will be underneath, but over here in the corner, it's actually higher, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, switching gears, how, this um, uh, carpet anemone, um, how much part does this get? This one here, this, this actually a ridder eye, not a carpet. Oh, okay. So this one here is getting 140, 130 to 140. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. They All generally right. need more light yeah. uh, to do better. I used to have them in the SPS table where yeah. they were getting probably four, 500 par and it was wow. a lot brighter in color, but wow. uh, I needed the space. <laughs> All right. So so even so this edge here, yep. uh, around 130, which is surprising. It's pretty far away from the light. 
which also a testament to how well the spread works for uh, just two radians on a tank, which is what, five feet, I'm thinking? Uh, they're six foot, six this foot by 30 six. inches. Wow, it doesn't look as big, but uh, the spread certainly covers In it. In between the two lights, we've got yeah. probably about a foot gap. Yep. And the part's still 150, 155. Okay, and you've got what uh, some euphilia here, Yeah, right? frog so spawns, hammers, they're all around that range. So 150, yeah. all right. Got Welsos, which like a little bit lower light. Yep. Um, they're around 130, 140 here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're a little bit pale when they come in, so we'll put them in the shade. We have some under the basket. And uh, how long is your light uh, schedule? Eight hours. Eight hours, eh? Open to close. Wow, <laughs> that's very <laughs> convenient. Yeah. All right. So this is a bit higher ledge. Yeah, it's a little bit more. Um, actually, it's not. It's about 135, 140 around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once we get to this side, it should be quite a bit less. Yeah, we're in the 60 to 70 around this area, but lots of Favio's chalices, uh, Leptoceris, mushrooms, they don't require much. So basically anything that's kind of lower is at a 60 or 70 par, but mm -hmm. yet as we... Uh, kind of going to more common um, LPS like Euphilia, you, it's more of a hundred. Yeah, 130 to 150 in this area. I gotcha. Yeah, all right. All around there. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next tank. So this is the same idea. We're aiming for around 150 because we have a lot of LPS. Um, stuff closer to the edge should be a little bit less, but lots of Euphilia over here. They're mm -hmm. 150, 145, 150. That's a good sweet spot. I want to point out that you also have some Montes uh, right in the yeah, corner there. There's some really nice Montes and cherry they, trees. They're getting yeah. 120 in this side right here. Okay, so that's so, pretty good. And there's another Monty here. It's getting 140. So I have a lot of Montes on this side here. Yeah, curious what they look like. They're getting 150 to 160 in this area. So a little bit higher and um you know just looking at the color probably you could even go a little bit lower is that yeah so? definitely with the sunsets they yeah. don't look like they're too happy the cherry yeah. trees seem to really like it yeah honey spiral is not that bad mm -hmm. uh season's greeting and the red roses don't seem to mind yeah but definitely the the sunset needs to be moved for sure interesting the rainbow monty loves it though yes. it's getting 170 right <laughs> in the middle there yeah and it's uh, picture perfect so the gani is uh, around 200 which is surprisingly high but i have Fairly good success. Yep. I haven't had any issues. Uh, the time we do have stuff that might be slightly bleached, we'll put it in a very low light area until it recovers. Yep. And then we bring it up and it starts to color up very, very well. Like even these Ghanis here, they were almost completely white, I want to say three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And some of them aren't doing too well after being cut, but it's just the process of cutting up a colony, it happens. Some of them look really, really good. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, you may see those fancy tags uh, mm -hmm. on your accurates. So if anybody is wondering how much uh, Demo is selling uh, things at Reef Paradise, uh, you see the prices. This is Canadian dollars and you'll see whatever is on sale. But sometimes you just have to ask. So Not enough price tags for us for sometimes, depending how many corals we have. Well, uh, you know where uh, you can get more. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, moving on from Montes to, um, this is clove uh, polyps, right? Even these guys are getting uh, around 130 to 150 par. Wow, and they look uh, picture perfect. A lot of the times I find with softies, it doesn't matter how much light you give them. Um, the only time I see problems is with like mushrooms when you really give them like five, six, seven hundred par, some of them don't right. like it. Um, you can see some of the mushrooms here, they're getting 200 and they're loving it. Mm. Really, really bright. And I know that sometimes you even did higher than uh, 200 yeah, for I've mushrooms. Yeah, I've done some experiments with 800, 1,000 par, uh, and we get some pretty crazy colors out of some of the mushrooms. So, nice. Ever got any of uh, them to bounce? Uh, we have a couple sour patch mushrooms that are starting to bounce now, oh, but nice. we've brought them closer to 400 par, not that much. Gotcha. We All right. In this corner? Around 80, around the same thing as the other yeah. table. It's, just, it's the same same setup, just the blues. So yep. we're running a little bit more light yep. uh, with the cyan channel. Yep. So that's where we get that roughly 10 to 15% increase in this tank. Um, I want to also notice or mention that we're running, we're using Apogee MQ200, uh, which I think you have to multiply by a factor of 1.08 uh, to get the par because of the conversion factor underwater. And then obviously it's not as sensitive to the blue as the fancier par. So if anybody's wondering, that's what we do. 
All right, let's move on to the one that I'm really interested in. This is your Acro tank that is also temporary Euphelia tank. And yes. it's having this crazy <laughs> set of lights. There are five lights and four of them are blues and one pro, correct? Yes, and I just recently spread them out a little bit more because yes. the torches were getting too much light. Yes. Um, but they're still in like the 300. Closer to the edge here, we're looking around 220. Uh, once we get here, we're looking at around 300, 350. When I came over, when was it, uh, two or three days ago, uh, you had uh, them running at uh, under 450 and they were like not melting, nothing. So no, there was, was a, there was a few stressed out ones, so. uh, which we moved. Yeah. But it's typical for any order that we bring in. Okay. That's, uh, that's neat, so moving on. These ones are at under 500 bar. Yeah. And again, they seem to be loving it, very bright colors. Wow. The price tags are, sorry, the, yeah. the names tags here are very, very bright, so it's yeah. hard to see some of the colors. Once we go to this side, we start to creep up to 600 par. This is where we have a lot more light. Yes. And this is with diffusers as well. Wow. So we're losing, uh, I think it's around 12% with diffusers. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're looking at a four, four to 500 over here, closer to the middle, it's closer to 600. 600 par, so you're really cooking those acros, eh? Oh yeah, definitely. And then you got some right on the wall here. Um, what is the par for the frag uh, section? These ones here, yeah. 500. 500. Yeah. And everything is uh, looking pretty decent. There's one or two things that shouldn't have been in this spot, like yes. golden rod, which just completely melted overnight. Like they shouldn't yes. have been here. Yes. Uh, those are all in 400 par range. Yep. But most of these acros, like this entire rack, is it's a little grafting project that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, just brought I can it see out. that. I brought it out to the front just because there was a little bit of algae growing on the racks. So I let the <laughs> fish eat it all up. This is beautiful. And then it goes back into hiding for the next few months. Yep. That's, uh, that's looking good. And then you got the acros all looking pretty good as well. So. Yeah, these are some of the leftovers from the shipments that just came in really, really rough. Yep. Um, bleached completely or peeling halfway. Mm -hmm. like this one specifically is still alive somehow even this milli back here. Yep. We always give everyone a chance. There's no point of throwing them out. There's, no. a, there's a few under the racks you can see that are you know, 50 to 80% bleached. Uh, but even if we save a frag of them and see what they turn into, you never know what you get. That's, uh, yeah. And it's definitely stopped dying, so. Yeah, a lot of those have been here for six plus weeks. So whatever died was within the first week and then it just takes forever for them to recover. It's gorgeous. All right, shall we take a look at the display tank? And we have, what, uh, two XR15 radians? Yeah, these uh, are the blues. Blues. And then for fun, we added on the Reef Bright uh, K15 kits, which really adds a little extra shimmer, some nice uh, actinic lighting. Yep. And uh, mainly SPS dominated, as you can see. Yep. We've thrown in some Euphelia gardens, and uh, Ghani garden. Yes. I'm working on adding some stuff on the sand bed here and there, but we always end up selling the nice stuff we keep here. Very so nice. This is a very high light tank for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, most of the acros on this middle shelf here are getting between three and four hundred. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly even spread. What about the euphelia? So uh, these torches, the torches, they're getting about three hundred to three hundred and fifty bar. Wow! So this that's... one's getting four hundred in reverse holy grail. Um, and I'm really curious about your, uh, I, th I think you're not supposed to call those uh, trekkies anymore, right? Or well, there's Walsophilias on the bottom, yeah. and then there's the Indophilia. Yeah. So those ones are getting uh, around 240. Okay. And so that's very high normally for one of those types of corals, but yes. they don't seem to mind. They've also been acclimated to higher light, around 180 in the tables before yeah. we brought them over. And also they're shielded a little bit by the torches, right? Yeah. So, okay. And then on the other side, frog spawn? Even more, this one's okay. getting around 300. Oh, it's, wow. So it just goes to show you, here you have uh, the same species of Euphelia that you have under 150 par. Here you've got double the par, and clearly everything is looking uh, pretty good. Yeah, even the Flavia's in the back corner. Yeah. These ones here. You're really cooking it. They're getting about 150, and they're in the yeah. bottom left of the tank. Got some Montes on the back. Yep, it's gorgeous. They're getting about 240 par. The rainbow really likes it. And I got to ask about that uh, forest fire melee uh, right next to the sunset. What is that? That one? Yeah. That one's getting just under 400. 400 par. Holy smokes. And it's still, it's looking it looks, puffy. It looks better than the yeah. one that's getting about 330. And they're both so. the same strain from the same tank when I got them. 
Makes you wonder, right? Eh? It's freaky. However, and then uh, that uh, Fox Flame. Um, Fox Flame, I don't think is getting too much light. It's getting about 260. So that's yeah. why it's a little bit darker. Yeah, right? it's not so. as not as uh, bright tipped. Okay. Our home wrecker is getting 300. So not not a crazy amount. Mm -hmm. His backside is a lot more colored than his front. I think that's because he's getting more from the back. Nice. That's a beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, all these all these are getting between 280 and 350. So uh, I'm sure some of the viewers are going to ask um, roughly, what do you keep your nutrients at? Um, so normally we keep our nitrate at about seven to 10 mm -hmm. ppm. Um, we were recently went away for the month of April, so it climbed a little bit to around 13. Yep. Uh, our phosphate is always at 0 0.04. It never really moves from there. Um, and then as far as our alkalinity, magnesium and calcium, we keep alk at around 8.6. It's really hard to manage it in the store yep. because we're always selling corals, we're always bringing corals in. So there's always different growth rates in the system. Uh, it's fairly stable. I don't think it moves more than 0.3 uh, dKH a day. Right. Our calcium is 440 and our magnesium is 1350. So folks, uh, if you ever wondered, you got a new coral and you don't know what par you can keep it at, I thought this was very helpful to actually see how they thrive under different par, uh, different tanks, you know the uh, measurements, so you actually know the nutrient level. Um, so Dima, thanks a lot for showing us around. Thank you for coming by. It's always a pleasure. Okay, until next time. Bye.